Hey mushroom lovers on YouTube, um, it's Jewel again and I have two topics that I wanted to do a video on today um, because I'm uh, in the middle of doing it right now myself and I thought it would be something helpful for some of you. So I'm talking about um, buying blocks and also getting rid of blocks. So number one, buying blocks. You can purchase blocks from um, lots of different uh, commercial growers from you know around the, the country and Canada and wherever and they can range anywhere from I don't know five dollars a block to you know ten dollars a block well I'd say probably seven fifty including shipping at least for me some of them are upwards of ten dollars including the shipping and again that's one block uh, for me I sell my um, mushrooms per pound you know an average my oysters for example for ten dollars a pound so these blocks you know generally if you're buying them they're usually going to give you at least two or, or produce about two pounds so for me you know I'm making twenty dollars a block you know I spent ten so I'm still netting ten if that makes sense some of the reasons why you would buy blocks would be uh, well I'll tell you the reason I buy blocks uh, I can only produce sometimes one batch a week like one batch for me is like 35 40 blocks it just depends on if I'm doing big bags or small bags or whatever um, and you know in a perfect world I do two batches a week but um, I have three kids, I got a lot of stuff going on. I, I only, I work by myself. So if I'm only able to do one bag a week, or one batch a week, and I've got um, the demand for more, meaning I can make more money, my, my chefs want more, I can buy some blocks and, you know, extend my offering, basically. Um, if I do a batch myself, you know, let's say that $10 a pound or whatever that I'm earning, probably $9 and I don't know, 75 cents or something like that is coming back to me, excluding my labor costs. And there are all kinds of videos and books that you can read on, you know, how to value your time. Um, but I'm just not even worried about that right now. But my physical costs that came out of my pocket is, call it, you know, I don't know, 25 cents. Actually, Eric of Myers Mushrooms would have probably an exact figure. I might even be off. It might be more like a dollar. Anyways, they're keeping a lot of the money. So with blocks, again, I'm only keeping, you know, half of the money, half of the gross earnings. But I'm of the belief that um, I would rather, in the end, have more money in my pocket um, by buying some blocks if I can't produce enough of my own. So again, if I can only make, I don't know, let's say it's, you know, 35 blocks and times, you know, two pounds each, so that's 70 pounds, you know, times, I don't know, whatever. I'm not good at the math, like, right on the fly. Bottom line, if I can't make enough money um, by doing my own, just my own blocks and I want to supplement, I'd rather have lesser money, you know, net in my pocket by buying the money, um, by buying the blocks than by not doing the blocks at all. So I hope that makes sense to you. Um, so anyways, on that subject of actually buying blocks, the logistics, you got to think about the logistics of it because I was all about it and I still am. But logistically for me, it was a little tough. Uh, number one, things to know. If you are in a residential area, your grow is there, um, they're gonna charge you more for shipping. They're also gonna charge you more for, um, they, they need, for the freight, they need to know whether uh, they're gonna have a lift gate or not. Lift gate is usually like an extra $150 for that. Basically all that means is you got this huge load, mine is 2,000 pounds. I've got uh, 20 boxes, let me get this right, 20 boxes that have 10 blocks each. So each box is 100 pounds. Yeah, and I have 2,000 pounds. Yeah, so I have 20 boxes of 10 blocks. And, um, you know, it's, it's a lot, and it's heavy as hell. So they have to deliver it a quarter mile down the road, which is how long my driveway is. I have to then trailer it up here, up a hill to the cabin. So if it's like, you know, rained or is muddy or snowy or whatever, forget about it. Like, I'm just screwed. Um, so if you're in any kind of situation like that where you're not in a... Um, commercial like you know warehouse or something like that you really got to think about how you're gonna get the blocks from the truck into the house but also the second thing on that is that you gotta pretty much have a walk-in cooler unless you know that your grow your fruiting room is gonna be completely empty Because usually when you're buying blocks they're ready to go in it there, there's no more incubation time or whatever they're, they're ready to go 
if you've got shiitake, they're really going to be ready to go straight into the fruiting chamber because um, all that jostling around that they've done inside the uh, the freight truck, I mean, it, it's like, okay, tree's fallen, I'm ready to start fruiting. So they for sure have to go right in the fruiting room. Um, but for me, like this last batch, um, I already had a lot in my grow, so I wanted maybe 60 additional bags in there at the moment. The rest of them I had to load into my, my walk-in cooler, and thank God I have one. Um, so it, but it's taking all these boxes are taking up a lot of room. A box is like this. They're you know, pretty big, you know, because again, they can have, they're usually, they'll fit 10, 10 pound blocks in there and they're just, you know, they're just heavy and I have a lot of bruising from them. So you got to have a walk-in cooler or it's highly recommend, recommended. Um, and it's also, you know, if it's bad weather or let's say you're sick the day that it gets delivered, it's just, it's good to have a cooler. So it buys you, excuse me, it buys you time if you need it. Um, but the second thing is on getting rid of your blocks once you have them. Okay, so this is the front of the cabin, and as you can see, um, that is a little bit of a graveyard there for spent blocks. And this actually looks good because uh, I did a little pre-cleaning before I started doing this video. Um, I mean, these blocks were like up to here. It was crazy. Um, and the only reason for that is it's winter time here, but we've had a lot of rain and snow, so it's very muddy. And I wasn't able to get out here with my pickup truck or anything until like the last couple days. But basically what I'm doing is I'm taking all the blocks and here I'll show you. This one's actually easy because um, I guess this was a, well, actually this wasn't a king. I thought it was something else. <laughs> Another story. But anyways, it's been, um, the top has been cut off of the, uh, the plastic here. So, you know, all I do is I sit here with my trash can and uh, you know, make a pile of blocks in this trash can, and then a pile of the uh, the plastic. And uh, I, because I'm in the woods, I just dump them. And I try to dump them far in the spring, summer, fall. Um, from what I understand, I'm, I, I'm gonna definitely have to do it far away from the uh, from the fruiting house here because it's just gonna produce a lot of flies and gnats. You don't want that anywhere around. But for now, while it's cold, frozen, you know, I can kind of get away with just throwing them in the woods a little bit closer to me. So, um, yeah, it's just something I never thought about is what to do, where am I gonna put these blocks? And, you know, right now, I don't know, there, there was probably, I'd say probably 100 blocks there that I had piled up, and then I've got about 60 to 75 in my grow room still to get rid of. And then yesterday, I got rid of 75 blocks, uh, shiitake blocks. Those are cool to get rid of because you've already stripped the bag and you literally just gotta like throw them or put them in something. Um, but uh, but yeah, the rest that are you know bagged, you, you gotta do something with the bag and do something with the block. Um, I have a four wheel, four wheel with the uh, trailer on the back and uh, you know I can use that, which is probably what I'm gonna start doing in a little bit. But for now, I just, I'm using the trash can. Um, last thing on getting rid of the blocks is that many times Farmers, local farmers and gardeners will actually want them because the substrate is really good uh, compost for them. And you know, I've heard from other mushroom farmers that people will just come and take them away for free. I mean, you just give them the whole block and the, the plastic and all that, and they'll get rid of it. But um, yeah, I have not found that. I even reached out to all the farmers in my co-op and uh, said, "Hey, you know, I've got all this mushroom substrate. You know, would anyone like to take it away for compost?" And it was like crickets. So maybe they're going to be singing a different tune come springtime and, you know, they're getting their fields all plowed and everything. And then they might be hollering, you know, knocking on my door. But for now, I've got to find a place to get rid of this myself. And for me, it's the woods. So uh, anyhow, that's my day today. This is the unglamorous or non-glamorous side to mushroom farming. Although, yeah, there really is no, yeah, there's, there's really no glamorous part to, uh, to mushroom farming. Who am I kidding myself? Um... But yeah, this is it. So this is my day. I'm going to be just uh, getting rid of these blocks and uh, moving some other blocks in that I've purchased and yeah, just keeping it moving. So I hope this has been helpful. If it has, I want you to uh, like the video um, and or give it a thumbs up, like, thumbs up, hearts. I get all confused, as you know. Um, but do that and be sure to subscribe for more little informative videos like this that's meant to help beginning mushroom farmers like myself. Take care. Thanks so much. Thank you.